Hello and welcome back to part 2 in this series. Apologies for the delay from part 1, but I've got a lot to cover so let's get started. After releasing part 1, I found that the binary data from Zentry I was using to decode Canvas data from contained a lot more data than I originally thought, so I wrote another extractor script to turn this data into this. My next task was to generate another Python script that could then take this process data and convert it into class files for my project. This was simply because I'm too lazy to write all this out manually. It's about 1500 lines long, don't want to reset my computer for 8 hours. Let's look at an example frame here. This contains data for the rotation of the rear wheels of the car. Here is some CAN frame payloads I captured whilst driving slowly at 15 miles an hour. Converting it all into binary, the offset and length descriptions in the descriptor file make sense. We have to group bytes from the start of the frame in chunks according to their lengths, and then assign them to values in the descriptor file. The first entry for the pulse ring counter for the left rear wheel says that it starts at position 0 in the frame and is 8 bits long. Let's extract that from the frame like so. This process can then be repeated for each value of the frame. Here is all the binary data assigned to the values in the descriptor file. Now let's convert these into actual values by doing a simple binary to decimal conversion. The rotation indicators are assigned an enum value based on their binary values. In this case, zero means it's passive. This is what the generator script looks like. It generates such horrors such as this, and this. Once my code was generated, I then could finally work on the app again. One of my main goals for this project is to create a system that can sample music playing over Bluetooth and flash the lights at the front of the car, just like in a Tesla Model X. Except this will be controlled using the amplitude of the music at different frequencies, rather than a pre-programmed script like the Tesla Model X uses. Therefore, my system should, in theory, work regardless of the music playing. I began by creating a simple test interface for the head unit that allows me to turn on and off the indicator lights, fog lights, or side lights at a configurable interval. Now here is the first test of the system flashing the indicator lights. Once the prototype worked, I then set about creating a party manager class. This would run a thread in the background to keep track of the light state and would receive requests from the music sampler thread turn on or off a specific light. Then it will modify the data it's sending to the car over canvas in order to keep each bulb on or off. Now for the initial test of the party mode class. Next, I set about reverse engineering the head unit's own Bluetooth music app, so that I could integrate the music controls into my own application, and control the Bluetooth music and volume from the steering wheel. The Android intents were easy to figure out, it was as simple as listening for intents sent by the head unit's own server app, to get the track data of what's currently being played. To actually control the track or volume, I first created another thread that pulls the steering wheel CAN bus frame every 10 milliseconds, looking for a change indicating a key is being held down or being released.
If it detects a change, it sends an event out of which key was pressed and what page the instrument cluster is on. And from my app class, I can register listener interfaces for both a short press or a long press for all the six keys on the steering wheel. From the car now, as I press the up and down arrow, the music tracks are seat, and as I adjust the volume, you can hear that the volume level is also being changed. Alright, that sums it up for this episode. Thanks again for watching, click subscribe if you want to be notified when part 3 comes out. Goodbye.